Ezra chapter 9 in the first verse. The Bible says, Now when these things were done, the princes came to me, saying, The people of Israel and the priests and the Levites have not separated themselves from the people of the lands, doing according to their abominations, even of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Jebusites, the Ammonites, the Moabites, the Egyptians, and the Amorites. For they have taken of their daughters for themselves and for their sons, so that, so that the holy seed have mingled themselves with the people of those lands. Yea, the hand of the princes and the rulers have been chief in this trespass. And when I heard this thing, I rent my garment, and my mantle, and plucked off the hair of my head and of my beard, and sat down astonished. Then were assembled unto me every one that trembled at the words of the God of Israel because of the transgression of those that had been carried away, and I sat astonished until the evening sacrifice. And at the evening sacrifice, I rose up from my heaviness, and having rent my garment and my mantle, I fell upon my knees and spread out my hands unto the Lord my God and said, O oh my God, I'm ashamed and blushed and blushed to lift up my face to thee, my God, for our iniquities are increased over our head and our trespass, our trespass is gone up into the heavens. Uh, this, Lord, this evening, the Lord be my helper, I'll be preaching, can you still blush? Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you for your goodness and watch care to our church. Lord, we thank you uh, for everyone that's here tonight, because surely we know that uh, they're here by divine appointment and not by just happenstance, and we give you great praise for that. Lord, we pray uh, this evening that you would be with your people, Lord, that you would draw them to yourself. And Lord, if it would please you tonight, Lord, that you might save some lost person that's here among us. And we'd be faithful to give you the praise and the glory and the honor for it all. For it is in Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Now, uh, the book of Ezra and Nehemiah uh, are not preached on a great deal today. And the reason why there, there is twofold. Number number one, it's mostly about repentance, and the second, they're mostly about obeying God's uh, direction, and and that's not popular preaching in 2011. And so you see these books skipped over a whole lot, but there in Ezra and Nehemiah, there's a great deal of depth of what causes people to serve the Lord God of the Bible. So uh, beginning in, again, the first verse, now when these things were done, and anytime you see that, you need to go pick up what was done because apparently it's significant to the writing. And so if you look, and we won't read it for time's sake, but about the last five verses of chapter eight, these things had been accomplished. First of all, there was an inventory of the silver and gold that remained in the temple. The valuable items uh, were counted and numbered and, and ready for the service of the Lord. Now, uh, the, va the valuable items within yourself need to be counted. Now, the valuable items within an individual that's saved, number one, is their salvation of their never-dying soul. And then after that, you know, uh, the Bible says there's fruits of the Spirit, uh, uh, love, joy, uh, faith. And how many of those do you have? Uh, uh, you know what? The one thing I see lacking among God's people today is really the first fruit of the Spirit, and that's love. Yeah. Uh, we've turned into a haughty, self-righteous people. And the only, way, the only remedy that I can give you to that, you remember before the Lord saved you. And, and remember what you were and how and how you were. And, and that, will, that will bring the humbleness back to you. So they had made an inventory of the silver and the gold. Uh, they'd offered a sacrifice, a huge sacrifice of animals. Now, the only thing I can say, it's unclear to me whether it was in the temple or outside the temple. And the reason why they were still working on the building and getting the things together and the very priests that were to be offering the sacrifice 
weren't fit to do so. And we find that that's what's addressed in 9, is their fitness to do so. I, so I don't know if they had true fellowship in the house of God, or if it was out in the outer court, really exactly what was going on, but they sacrificed. You know, if you want to really have anything with God as far as a relationship, there's some things that's got to be sacrificed. Uh, you don't always get to be on mama's coattail. Uh, the Lord God's going to push you out of that comfort zone and put you where He would bid you to do, and there you can serve Him. And so they they had the money, they made the inventory, and, and they made the sacrifice, and lastly, they went in and given, uh, give it to the leaders, the the temple leaders that were still there. They, they put these reports... And then, lastly, it said that it furthered the people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when you do what's right, according to the scripture, it will always further you. Yeah. You, you, be, you ever been in a service when you're truly on point and praying for the preacher, and then the other time when you're just sitting there spinning wheels? Yeah. Wondering what's going on on the TV yeah, and right. wondering what, what mama did last night and all, all in all we could go. You know, the, the this is the best time we'll spend is right here. And the best thing you can be doing is praying for me or whomever's preaching. And the Lord will always grant that. So they 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 had made some preparation and got some things ready for the worship of the Lord. Uh, so we see now the things he's speaking of. Now, when these things were done, the princes came to me saying, the people of, uh, of Israel and the priests and the Levites had not separated themselves. Now, uh, if you remember when they first found this book, and it's covered more clearly in Nehemiah, they were amazed at what they had found in the temple. And when the law of God became before them, they were brokenhearted. They were unbelievably convicted by what had transpired, and they couldn't believe where they were at. But you know, just knowing about it does you no good. You know what? I believe we live in a day where we know a lot of things. But it does us no good. Mm. Uh, if you don't act on something, if uh, 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 you know, I, I told this story. I uh, guess our new people know about it. But we had a missions conference, a mission camp for uh, children one time, and we went off down to here in my group, and I, I was not the leader. Let me say that they got lost out here in the in the ridge where they grow uh, cedars or pine, and. Justin was in my group, and uh, Justin was walking just like this, watching his feet step right on the copperhead and, and killed him, just flat dead, killed him. And But you know what? I was just about to say, Justin, there's a snake, but he just kept walking. I mean, so what good did he do? See, if Justin didn't react and stop and say, Brother Larry, oh yeah, there's a snake, I need to stop, what good did he do? It did him no good. By the grace of God, he killed the snake with just one big foot because of the goodness of God. But when we see something in the Word of God and we don't be obedient, it's our fault. It's our fault. And don't, 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 be, don't blame divine grace when you allow sin in your, in, in your own life and, and you feel okay about it. And, and so we see that they have not separated themselves. Notice separated from what? From the people. From the people of the land, the groups around them. You know what? The, the best thing about homeschooling is this. You separate it. <laughs> you know what? I don't want my bunch down here and, uh, and the wor and the schoolhouse teaching them a worldly agenda of how they're supposed to act and think and, and respond. Because you know what? You're going to get you a bunch of little worldlings out of that. Right. Uh, they, they'll be exactly what you train them to be. Yeah. And, and so we find then that uh, because of that, they had all these traditions from this mis mixed culture. You know what? We don't need to be marrying off our children to a bunch of other people. Now that's not popular teaching today, but it's the truth. If you you know if you marry 
a Methodist woman or a Methodist man, y'all don't have conflict. You can say what you want to. If, if you really believe what you say you do, and you're going to be and and you're going to stand for it, there's going to be trouble. Mary within your own people. And so because they had intertwined with these worldlings, even including the Egyptian and the Egyptian gods, there were problems. There were difficulties. Verse 2. For they have taken of their for they have taken of their daughters from themselves and for their sons, so that the holy seed have mingled themselves with the people of those lands. They're mingled. They, they have the same culture. They, they have items. They have gods from them. Yea, the hand of the princes and the rulers have been chief in this trespass. So the very people that were supposed to be leading Israel, both uh, governmentally and spiritually, were the very ones that was the highest involved in it. Sound familiar? Sound like something that might happen here in the good old USA? And so we find then that this, this people not being unique and not being separate was what was a huge problem, and it came to Ezra's attention. Verse 3, and when I heard this, when and when I heard this thing, now why had he not heard it? Well, if you know your Bible, he was in Babylon, and he had just got back. And he saw the situation for what it was. You know, uh, when you've been gone a while, you can see some things differently, can't you? If you're in the, you, you know what? Oh, Naomi changed her tune, didn't she? Yeah. You know why? She's got a different look at things. See, and, and we too, the very same way, if we can get in a more objective view of, of our spiritual condition, God will help us. So all those people around them had no idea. But when Ezra got there and says, look, what a mess have you made of this. You got uh, false gods down at the temple. You got, you got uh, people uh, marrying idolaters and you're not saying anything about it. Even the chief of the, of the temple, this has got to be addressed. Now, the worst thing about preaching on sin is this, saying you've got to address it. You know what? That's that's one of the strongest differences of between us and Catholics is I can't address your sin and you can't address mine. That's right. The Holy Ghost has to convict me and then once that is true, you have to address it. Now let me say this. If the Bible says that the Holy, the Holy Ghost don't have to knock you over with a sledgehammer, you ought to honor the Word of God. And, and so we find in this unusual situation that Ezra uh, says, this is, the, this, this is the situation. I also want you to say that it, see that it says he was astonished or astonished. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not like that anymore, are we? Right. That's what we're going to get into about blushing. We're no, we're no longer astonished. Men, Murray and men, and, you know, we're no longer astonished, are we? Right. Sodomites are death, adopted little children. That's right. No longer astonished, are we? Mm -hmm. Brought us down to nothing. Right. Uh, I wish I could get embarrassed about some things, don't you? Yeah. We think the Amish are crazy, but you know what? Sometimes I, don't, I wonder if they ain't got the right idea. <clears throat> now, I want my truck. <laughs> but it wouldn't hurt me to be away from the world, would it? Yeah. You see what I'm saying? I bet if they saw two men running together, it would embarrass them, don't you? Right. I mean, they'd blush. I, mean, I imagine they'd be upset. And, and so what Ezra's message was this, is you're so intermingled with the world, how could you possibly dream about serving the God of this book? Verse 4, then were assembled unto me every one that trembled at the words of the God of Israel. Now, I want you to see that if you're marking your Bible, mark that one down. Because not everybody not everybody trembled. Not everybody was assembled. The only people that were there after he says, listen, we're in a mess, it's the people that trembled at the word of God. People that honored the word of God that recognized, hey, I may not like it, 
But this is what the Word of God says, so we're going to have to go with it. You know what? That, that's few and far between. Yeah. Remember the Lord Jesus Christ in His own ministry? Uh, he, had, he had taught the people and they got their belly full. And I can't remember what he said when he preached, brother. I think maybe he identified himself. Or he had said that it's going to be a difficult journey. And there was just the twelve. And he looked at him and said, Will you leave also? Yeah. So I don't think that this was half the population of Israel here. It, it's the one that meant business with God. You, you know the ones that, that will be when the going gets tough is the people that mean business with God. And that, that's exactly who was left. So whoever this population was, was there with Ezra and understood that he was correct. Now, at the end of that verse, he said, I stood astonished until the evening sacrifice, and at the evening sacrifice, I rose up from my heaviness, and having rent my garments and my mantle, I fell down on my knees. Now, the garments and the mantle were very important to a Jewish man, and particularly a man in Ezra's position, because uh, you just couldn't come in any way into the house of God. You know, that's the new thing, come as you are. Well, you know what? That's not ever been the way of God's people, has it? And, and, and so uh, he had on his priestly garment, and the mantle is what they used to cover their heads. And in the, in the church age, the women are to cover, and the men are not, but in the old age, they all cover, men and women. And, and the mantle is, was wore here, and they went to the temple, they took it off and put it on here. And, and, and they had their mantles on. And, and when they were so grieved, sometimes they would just rip that mantle in two. And that is what Ezra had done. He was so surprised and so thrown back about the sin of his own nation that it embarrassed him and he ripped his mantle. Uh, we don't get that embarrassed anymore, do we? We just really don't. Our nation's gone to nothing. And that's been in my life. I remember the very first time, and some of you, you, you younger people will be shocked. I remember when there was not one store open on Sunday in the entirety of Stewart County. Nobody. Not a gas station, not a, uh, a store, a food store, nothing. If you didn't get it on Saturday, you wouldn't get it to Monday. That's been in my lifetime. And I remember the first place uh, back home in our little community that opened on Sunday. And then it was just at noon. They let everybody go to church. <laughs> and then they opened up. And then I thought, I thought the people back home was going to stone those people. <laughs> I mean, and you know what? For about the first four months, it didn't do them any good to be open because nobody went. <laughs> they sat there and looked at each other. But in a little time, People would run in there and get gas. Then they'd get them a cold drink after church. And bit by bit, it wasn't nothing. Then everybody was open on Sunday. And then after that, it wasn't just after lunch, it was the whole day. And I know every, uh, at least three other people in here will remember this. Remember when there was no beer on Sunday? That wasn't so long ago, was it? And you, if you wanted to get drunk, you had to drive to Clarksville back then. See, things have changed, haven't they? <coughs> but do we get the over it? See, Ezra was in such a good condition spiritually, he could weep over some things. I'd love to be like that, wouldn't you? But, you know, separation ain't that you'll look goofy to the world. It, it's so that you protect yourself spiritually and, and that you would be horrified at some of the stuff they were seeing. Verse 6 and said, Oh my God, I am ashamed and blushed to lift up my face to thee. Embarrassed, humiliated, uh, didn't even know how to approach God in this thing. For our iniquities are increased over our head, and our trespass is grown up to the heavens. Now, very briefly, I want, to, I want you to notice two things. A, he was embarrassed enough to blush. And then secondly, he... Uh, he said it's going to get over our heads. 
Well, what does the water do eventually if you hold your head? You're going to drown. Right? Uh, that just is, you're going to drown. And, and, and so we find here that Ezra had the, the spiritual fortitude to be embarrassed. What about you? Do you have the spiritual fortitude to be embarrassed when you see some things? I remember this was probably about two years ago at work, and I honestly don't remember what it was said, uh, but we were in morning meeting, and somebody said something, and immediately my face went boof. And everybody in the room was laughing at me, not what was said, but they were laughing at me, and they said, we haven't seen anybody uh, turn red in years. And you know what? It struck me then that that's a sad truth. There were women in there that weren't embarrassed. You, you see what I'm saying? That's where we've arrived. Yeah. People no longer blush. People are no longer embarrassed because of sin. They're not embarrassed when sin is mentioned. And, and listen, that, that's in my lifetime. In 40 years, you look where we've come to. Did you ever believe... And Brother Junior and Sister Diane told me that it, I never believed this, that in my lifetime, men and women would be marrying each other. I, I never dreamed of such a thing. But here we are. Very, so I ask you this. What are the things that make you blush today? What would make you blush? I hope there's some still stuff out there. I don't want to see people running around naked, do you? Right. It's close. <laughs> yeah. I've seen some shorts recently. I don't even think they're, they're long enough to be recognized as shorts. I don't know what to call them. You see what I'm saying? Where are we at? What are we doing? Is there any blushing? See, God's people will blush. God's people will be humiliated in a nation where sin is the prime. But in the modern day, uh, we don't see this. Now, I just want to touch on a couple little things. And ladies, I, I'm not getting on you, but it, it's as an example, not as I'm barking on you. So remember that when I say this, everything's qualified, right? But now, when I was a boy, me and Judy fought like cats and dogs. We literally killed a cat one time fighting. <laughs> and uh, uh, one day she pops out of her bedroom and she was all made up and uh, I said, Judy, it looks like somebody slapped you. And she says, that's blush. I said, you having to put it on now? <laughs> and of course, then the fight was on. And uh, so uh, that's, uh, she come out another day, had her blush on. Uh, I, I called it fake embarrassment. <laughs> and uh, she, back, you gotta remember this in the late 70s, early 80s, and she had on her high, that stuff that goes on your eyelash, I don't know, not eyelashes, I'm up here, and it's blue. And it was from here all the way up to here. <laughs> and I, I asked her if her boyfriend punched her. <laughs> and the fight was like, yeah. But you see what I'm saying? It was, um, it was fake, right? It wasn't real. We had a big time about that, and later when we were older, we used to laugh about it. But uh, was it fake flush? And then one day, me and me and Mama's home, Judy is gone somewhere, and Mama called it rouge. Old women called it rouge instead of blush. And that's what Mama called it. And I said, well, Mama, I thought Judy said it was blush. And she said, oh, she don't know what she's talking about. And it was fake. Now, I don't know about the difference, but Mama's rouge was darker than Judy's blush. And uh, so I was looking at it and I said, well, Mama put some on. Oh, and she, she, she wouldn't do it. She, she was embarrassed. And so uh, I said, well, I'll get Judy to do it. Judy will do it. And so when Judy came home, she put some on and she came in the bedroom. I said, it looked like somebody slapped her. And she goes, no, it's rude, it's rude, it's rude. But the whole time, it was fake. Don't you think we live in a day where the blush is fake? When you hear that stuff and you're like, oh my goodness. And you heard the same thing last week. Yeah. 
That's fake, isn't it? Absolutely. That's putting your blush on when you're no longer embarrassed. When you, when you hear uh, 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 people blaspheming the name of the mighty one of heaven and you're no longer embarrassed. When, when you have people in our judicial halls that get up and mad uh, because the mighty God of, the, of our heaven is being preached or being prayed to and get up and leave. You know what? We can't blush anymore, can we? We have to put on the fake stuff, don't we? We have to get it out of a jar instead of really being humiliated by, by what, what we've become. See, we, we need more than that, don't we? We, we, need, we need genuine humiliation. We need genuine grief over sin. Genuine upset over what's happened before us. But we just don't see it. And we ought to, as God's people, crave it, crave it, crave it, crave it. And you know what? The, the only way that I can see, and through the years... Uh, now, Brother Kenny was talking to somebody, this boy we're going to be uh, trying to teach a class for, a good man. And he says, well, does Larry still preach on separation? And, <laughs> and uh, so, but now I think that we need to get back to a more rudimentary problem. And that's what separation is supposed to yield. Mm -hmm. And that's embarrassment. Oh, oh. You know, you wear your dress all the time and, and, and still look and say, you know, I just have this. Then do you get sick of hearing that from people? Well, it's just the age we live in. Well, you know, my parents say, go get me a buggy. And if it's just the way, the age that we live in, let's do something different. Look at these babies. What are they going to see? What, what, what are they, you know, if I've lived to see what I've had, literally stores being closed on the Lord's Day to men and women, men, Murray, and men in my 52 years, what are they going to see? You know what? It's really impossible, us, impossible for us to think of, isn't it? Mm. It'll be such a standard then when they see two men going down the hallway holding hands. They won't even blush. That's by devil's design, is it not? That's, that, that's what Satan wants for this world. Now go with me to Jeremiah chapter number 6. And we're going to close. Jeremiah chapter number 6. And verse 9. Jeremiah chapter number 6. In verse 9, Jeremiah, Jeremiah writing to the nation of Israel saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, They shall thoroughly glean the remnant of Israel as a vine, meaning the enemy nations, and, and turn back thine hand as a grape gatherer into the baskets. Now, I understand what's going on with our nation right now. I understand sometimes our president uh, may seem inadequate, but let me see this, say this, the judgment of God and all forms of government have always come by the hand of God. So when you look at him, you just know that we deserve it as a nation. When he does something stupid, say, oh well, I guess I've contributed my portion too. Exactly. Because that has it. The God has always used that medium. God can do what he, what he wants to. He can open the earth and swallow up Korah and his band. He can still do that today. But you know what? I've seen him, even in the history of Israel, he uses things around him a lot more than he does the, the, the unbelievable, does he not? Mm -hmm. and, and, and so we find then that in, in, in Jeremiah's day, he, he was predicting the judgment of Israel by the nations that were around them. Verse 10, to whom shall I speak and give this warning for that they may hear? Who is going to hear? Who is going to listen? In the day that we live, who is going to actually listen to what's being said? Behold, their ear is uncircumcised. You, you know, the, the whole thing of circumcision is this. Not You know, everybody always said identification identification and I, I get that I, I, I know that was a Jewish thing but the real thing is tenderness the purpose of circumcision is to make one tender and it just what he says you uncircumcised in heart the Lord Jesus said the same thing you, you uncircumcised that means their heart was hard 
That it was not yielding. That the word of God could be preached and preached and preached with no effect whatsoever. Nothing. And, and, and so we find that we've uh, arrived at the day of Jeremiah. People are still preaching. People are still uh, telling of the word of God, but nothing whatsoever seems to be happening. And they cannot hearken. They Again, notice that, and they cannot hearken. Behold, the word of the Lord is unto them a reproach, and they have no delight in it. You know what? We're, we're there. Brother Kenny was teaching last night about different versions of the word of God. You know what? You know why they want stuff where it says persons and not men and women? Because they don't, they don't want to hear that there's a difference between a man and a woman, and they sure don't want to hear that the man is the leader, do they? <laughs> We've arrived, have we not? We're here. And so we find that in, in Jeremiah's day, they they understood that. Uh, and, and he preached it, but they did not they did not embrace it. Then in verse 11, the Lord God, therefore I am full of the fury of the Lord. I am Weary with holding in, I will pour it out upon my upon the children abroad and upon the assembly of the young men together. For even the husband with the wife shall be taken, the aged with him that is full of days, and their houses shall be turned unto others with their fields and their wives together. For I will stretch out my hand upon the inhabitants of the land saith the Lord. For from the least of them, even to the greatest of them, every one is given to covetousness. And from the prophet, even to the priest, even to the preaching man, everyone dealeth falsely. You know what? You may not like me, but I'll tell you the truth. People come to me and I, and I will do my very best to tell them what the Bible says. You know, uh, more than once I, I had, and, and somebody very close to where this property stands come and said, will you marry me? Not me marry them, but will you perform the ceremony? <laughs> and uh, I said, do you have enough living wine? Well, yeah, but we were only married two months. And I said, they don't matter. I said, most certainly I won't marry you. You have, you have a living wine out there somewhere. You need to go to her. See, not real popular, is it? Not, not real happy tidings, what people look for. And so the Word of God is always going to be that way. It, it, it's not going to be palatable to the flesh. And that's exactly what Jeremiah was saying, is these people are not listening. They want something that's easy. Verse 14, They have healed also the hurt of the daughter of my people. Uh, slightly saying peace, <coughs> peace when there is no peace is that not the message of the day honey everything's going to be alright you know I, I see a lot of contempt on Facebook and, and if you make a stand on anything man you are hated you know, you know what they want if you believe in abortion that's okay, and if you hate it, that's okay too. You know what? You can say there's peace with that, but there is no peace. How could there possibly be with two such two separate dichotomies? There is no peace. So what they were saying is we agree to disagree, but it never works. It will never, ever work. There is no peace. You know what? There's no peace today. You, you look about, there, there, there is no peace whatsoever. People like us are hated. And you know what? If we're not real careful, we'll hate them. Right? You know, my, bo my blood can boil over some of that field. But you know what? I ought to be praying out to God for them. That's right. I'm not even more righteous than they. And, and so we find them... That Jeremiah said, hey, judgment is coming. Uh, you've duped yourself. You've lied to yourself. And you think you're peaceful, but judgment is coming. Verse uh, 15. Were they ashamed 
when they committed the abomination? No, most certainly they were not. Nay, they were not at all ashamed. Neither could they blush. And we get back to our content. No longer able to blush. Yeah. Just no longer embarrassed by it. Just walk by. You remember, you remember what the Bible says? Having their conscious, conscious seared with a hot iron. Mm -hmm. You know what the hot iron is, church? It's the world right out there. Mm -hmm. And every day it's coming up. And that way tomorrow you won't be, you know, you'll be horrified today. And it'll make you sick tomorrow. And by the middle of the next week, you'll be used to it. Right. Seriously. Should we not, as the Lord's people, uh, desire that that would not be so for us? That we would still blush? Somebody say something ungodly, and our, our face would turn red immediately. I, I, I want to be there, don't you? Mm -hmm. And let me say this, and we'll be done. You don't get there by hearing it and seeing it every day. You won't, you won't arrive at humiliation. You won't arrive at embarrassment when every day it's the same old muck. Watch what you watch on that TV. Watch what you listen to on your radio. You know, uh, Christian, I, I like my phone. And that truck I bought from Kenny don't uh, have a radio in it. But you know what? It's been a good trip because I, I have to listen to this thing. And I, I listen, I don't have any Ozzy Osbourne on this. Right? When my, I had the truck, Adam has it now. And it got to where there were no gospel stations, so I'd be trying to find something and I'd be hitting search or scanning or whatever it is. And just boom, something would come. And you know, that this is the hideous part. Stuff I hadn't heard in 35 years, I started singing the words to. Uh, you see what I'm saying? It don't get out of your system. We as the Lord's people, so the very best thing, just don't get involved with it. Right, right. Don't get involved with it to start with. Her good godly woman, at least I think she is, does something today that she put on Facebook. And it was a song, and it was from the 80s. And she was kind of saying, I love that. Well, we should. We should. You know, you know what? We should like songs that praise and glorify the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Things that hold him up. That, that's where our mind should be at. So can you still blush? Or do you have to paint it on and pretend like you're embarrassed? Which aren't 